I had a pretty tough day yesterday, um, and some of you knew that I would mention having a tough day, and so I did. Um, I had a funeral to preach. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. You were. You already thought I was going to say something else. Some of you didn't, yeah. Truthfully, I had a tough day because of that. Um, but those of you that don't know, I am a faithful Georgia Bulldog fan. And today is such an exciting day for me as a Georgia Bulldog fan because I was reminded this morning with a breath of fresh air that Georgia is on the way to a national title. So I was so excited that that hit me this morning. As some of you wish you could boo, but you've got a Baptist background and it would embarrass you. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 25 today. If you want to flip there, it is crazy. It was crazy yesterday. Russ, I called you out by name. He's back here on the base. Y'all know who Russ is. And the first thing he said to me this morning is, "You okay?" And I said, "Dude, I'm having a great day. I honestly had forgot the game." And um, anyway, he said, "Are you sure you're okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, I know what this guy's doing." But we still let him play base, even though he is. A sinner. But anyway, so Matthew, uh, Matthew 25, Crystal, sorry, babe. She told me a couple weeks ago, never talk about football again, but she just don't get it. She just don't get the significance in my life for this. But um, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a, a parable that Jesus taught. It's called the parable of the talents. And if you've been with us for some time, you remember we went through the book of Matthew. It took two and a half years, and we went verse by verse. So this will be a little bit familiar to you, but... I've got a few extra uh, little uh, things to teach on, I believe, that may help you out a little bit um, in your faith journey. So one thing we said last week was that if you did decide to come and, and you did decide to, well, I probably didn't give much information at all, honestly, but, but I think we got a little something today that if you partake, it'll, it'll really grow you um, as a family, as a Christian. And so I'm looking forward to, to some people committing um, to what this is. But this uh, story, this parable that we're teaching on, uh, found out from my friend Tim Arrington. And Tim is awesome. Tim and his wife, Winter, they help with the kids often here. And Winter is a CPA, so she helps, with our, helps Blake with our finances as well. So they've been a huge blessing to our church. And so Tim told me, dude, I've got to tell you what my pastor did when I was a kid. And so uh, that's where this come from. So I'm so grateful that uh, Tim had uh, thrown that out there for me. I think it's going to be fun and a growing experience for all of us. But what I'm going to do first is, is teach through this. It's, it's a lot of reading. Um, actually, b- verse 1 through 30. No, I'm sorry, 14 through 30. Now you can sigh a little bit. You're like, man, he's only going to read. And then I'm going to go back and break out a couple of things. But honestly, it's really self-explanatory. But before I even start, I want to mention this word talent. So the word talent is not a coin. It's a, it's a measure. It's a weight. Okay. So, for instance, if you had a, um, a talent of gold, that would be more valuable than a talent of silver. And so there's some other interesting things to point out about a talent here in a few minutes. I mean, you even know the modern day term. When we say talent, we don't think about money at all. But when they built the tabernacle back in the Old Testament, you can read through and you can uh, learn how much silver and gold was brought, even bronze, based on the measure that was taken. So talent is mentioned there a lot. So it's a, um, you know, a term of, uh, of weight. So, when you think of that today, you don't necessarily say, hey man, I've, I've got, um, dude, you know, man, I've got 300 pounds of $100 bills. I mean, it would be nice, I guess, you know, man, I've got 4,000 pounds of gold. I mean, you know, that would be how we would say it today. But we really use this word talent when we're talking about a natural ability that God has blessed you with, right? And we've all got something different. Some of us can break dance pretty good. Some of us have learned over time the right team to pull for. Some of us can do ballet and greet people at a door and say welcome. Some of us had rather just crawl in our little bitty shells and never speak to another human being because we're introvert. But you can do something behind the scenes that is unbelievably amazing. So you get the picture. God has blessed all of us with some form of natural ability to do things. And I think... That the overwhelming uh, thing in this parable 
is just that. Hey, you've got a talent. What are you going to do with it? So let's start here in verse 14. Jesus is talking here. So coming out of chapter 24, he's talking about his second return. And when you get to the, um, to the end of 24, he's real in your face about it. It's real good if you want to read chapter 24. He answers two questions. But starting in verse uh, 36, he says, But concerning that day and that hour. And he's talking about the second return of himself. So he's still continuing to talk about that. At the beginning of 25, he talks about the ten virgins. That's a unique parable in itself. And then we have the parable of the talents. And then there's a final judgment that is discussed. But all of this is red letters. It's just all woven together, all linked together. So Jesus is talking. It's going to sound like he starts in the middle of his conversation. Because guess what? We are starting in the middle of his conversation. Verse 14 says this, For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted them to them his property. Now I just quickly want to say that man signifies Jesus Christ in this parable. Okay, so when we read this, it's going to sound like, are you kidding me? This master made his servants do this? What? And then he got it all? What? This doesn't even make sense. But if you remember when we talked about money and we said that everything's the Lord's, when you look at it from that lens, this will make perfect sense when we know that that man, the master, is Jesus himself. It's interesting because he's talking about himself to some people that may not really realize that he is indeed that. Now, now he's talking mainly to his disciples, to his boys. They know exactly who he is. But every now and then... Somebody might have been leaning around the corner, if you will, and listening as well and learning for the first time. Verse uh, 15. To one, he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them. Didn't give us a time limit, but it's still pretty cool. And he went and traded with them, and he had five talents more. So he doubled what he had. Five turned into ten. Verse 17. So also, he who had two talents made two talents more. But the one who had received one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, there's our time frame, but we don't know what a long time is. Now, after a long time, the master... Of the servants came and settled accounts with them. Verse 20. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of of your master. That's the best part of this. This whole thing, the best part is enter into the joy of your master. Verse 22. And he also, who had the two talents, came forward saying, Master, you delivered two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done. This sounds real familiar because he says the same thing again. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He who had received one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But the master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown, and I gather, and I gather where I scattered no seed, then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at least coming I should have received what was mine, my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given. And he will have an abundance. But for the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. 
and cast a worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It took a turn there at the end that you probably didn't see coming. It's like, whoa, whoa. Jesus, you were talking. It was kind of cool. We were hanging in there. And it was like, bam, let's just destroy the wicked one that didn't do anything. So this seems to me that there's a whole lot in this particular parable. And we are certainly going to talk about the money connection to this today. But I don't want to be mistaken, and I don't want you to be mistaken, that there is certainly an application here, in my opinion, that talks about the faithfulness of Christians. See, the one that was cast away was a poser. See, he was a slothful servant. And the truth of the matter is, he didn't even know his master. And the way that we know he didn't know his master is because he looks at him and he said, I knew you to be a hard man. But he wasn't a hard man, and we see that because we see the joy that he allowed the other two to enter. So we know that he's not a hard man. We know he's a serious man. We know he's a serious master. But we know that he's not hard in the way that he would have shamed the one if he had tried something and come up a little bit short. Maybe he would have patted him on the back or something and told him to try next time. So I think there's a spiritual perspective here is what I'm saying. And so for this, this slothful servant, he's a, he's a poser. He's a hypocrite. He was posed as a servant, but he wasn't a servant. Because when it came time to serve, he did nothing for his master. So it's interesting that the other two did. And what they did is they were very faithful with what they were entrusted to. And so you got one dude that got five. It doesn't tell us what he did. It doesn't tell us if he baked goods or if he went and started a business. Or doesn't tell us any of that. We don't know what he did, but he traded. He did something. He probably bought something and tra- traded it. Or he had a garden and he sold that. Maybe he made wine. I don't know. Maybe that's where the name Cristal came from. Sorry, that was inappropriate. So, so I don't know exactly what he did. And the same with the one that had two talents. Now, a talent would have been a pretty good sum of money. But check this out right here in verse, the the one that it's mentioned in verse 18, where it says, um, let me read it one more time. Well, I won't have to read it, but the very last word in 18 is literally the word money. So for that to be translated in the original Greek, it literally, the literal translation right there, not all the time when you see money, but right there is silver. So a talent of silver, even one, would have been a pretty good sum of money back then. So it's interesting that he gives them a pretty good sum of money, but he knows what they're capable of. Maybe one of them was already a business owner. Maybe they weren't. Maybe, just because the master knows everything about them, they just had an opportunity presented to them that they had been waiting for. And they maybe daydreamed about a day. You know, if I had this, I would try that. Maybe I'm looking at it completely wrong, and the master already said, hey, go do this with it. And if that's the case, it's not recorded in Jesus' parable that way. So it's pretty clear that he didn't. So it seems to me that these servants all did something different with their talents. And I got to thinking about that modern day word with our talents. Now, the money part applies, right? Some of us, um, Crystal thrifts, and she does an awesome job, and I'm very proud of her. She'll find something that she puts on eBay and thrifts, and that's pretty cool. Works out pretty good. And I got, I got this little thing, I, I cut hair. And that's a form of a talent, right? But it seems that mine's a lot different than Crystal's. Like, Crystal buys a tangible product, and I provide a service that creates a product, if you will. Not that I'm creating your hair. You know what I mean. God did that part. I just get to, I get to mold you, if that makes sense. That just sounded so weird. <laughs> it did. It just sounded weird. But see, the, but, the, but the talents are, are, are they, they matter. And see, this is what has dawned on me about just the, the modern day word talent in general that we apply to our physical abilities our mental abilities, our knowledge of something which brings you to an ability, is that they all 
matter, like big time. It's not that, oh, well, you know, I don't do, I'm not a rock star, so being talented in front of millions at a time, so I don't matter. It's, it's not that. It's the little things. Maybe you're one that's talented in building friendships. Maybe you're one that's talented in linking people together and connecting people. That's not insignificant. Because what happens when the right relationships are built is sometimes somebody introduces somebody. And there's a talent in that. Because everybody doesn't just run up and say, hey, I want you to meet so-and-so. Sometimes it embarrasses some of us. I hadn't been embarrassed in a while. Matter of fact, the last time I remember my face turning red was in the barbershop. It, it's, it's happened before. It's happened like eight times in my whole life. But I remember turning so red, it was as if I had on a beautiful Georgia Bulldog sweatshirt. But anyway, I was in the barbershop, and this man that worked at a particular school, it was a, it was a, I can't say that part, but he worked at a particular school, and I didn't know that he was a believer, and he wore a shirt in, and it said something about God on the back of it. And I said, dude, let me see that shirt real quick. And he turns around, and I'm like, man, that looks pretty cool. And he said, you didn't know I had him in me, did you? And I just turned blood red because he read my mind. But see, I can't judge his heart. Are you with me on that? I didn't know this man's heart. I just knew some of the fruit of his actions. But I was wrong because he probably had some weak moments in front of me. See, God knows our intentions. Jesus knows what he's blessed us with and gifted us with. And for some of us, it's to take a little bit of money and to turn it into more. And for some of us, it's to pay our debt off. And for some of us, it's different things. It's just different things, right? But the basics are the basics. And sometimes we all fall in the same category. So I don't think that the Lord always wants us to be something we're not. Notice how I said that. I do think sometimes if you're not a welcoming person, that he does probably want you to be a welcoming person. It doesn't mean that you got to go from introvert to extrovert. That doesn't mean that. But it does mean you can provide a smile and just talk to somebody and realize that it goes an extraordinarily long way. Of course, that applies to our church called We the Church, but it applies to your life, your everyday life. If you're at Hobby Lobby or Chick -fil it's hard not to smile in Chick-fil-A. Y'all know that. But wherever you are, if you're at a dirt track race with me, then we're certainly smiling. Or watching. I'm not going to say it again. It hurts too bad. But see, we've all got different talents. And so as I talk about this, I'm just kind of hoping that you're thinking about what are your talents? What are you good at? Are you a numbers person? Are you great at budgeting and you could help somebody else do that? Are you a great cheerleader and you could maybe train one of the new girls when she comes? Are you supposed to be in the NBA like me and you could try your best to teach somebody a little bit about basketball? Are you real good at opening God's Word and reading it? Are you real disciplined on yourself? There's a little bit of a talent involved. I don't know, I guess, if you learn a discipline, right? Right? There's a talent that some of us don't have. Some of us are not as strict on ourselves as others. But I think as a whole, we kind of all really deal with the same things. Just like these three servants did. They all had something that they could bring to the table. We don't know what it is. You all have something that you can bring to the table. I don't know what it is. If you tell me, that would be awesome. If you say, Adam, I'm worth $50 million and I'm just waiting on you to ask me for 600000 so we can buy that building, then I'm asking you right now. <laughs> say, Adam, listen, I'm so poor that it brings shame to my heart to even admit that. Then you know what? Be reminded that Jesus watched a bunch of hypocrites show off with giving a bunch of money one day. And then the lady that put them two tiny little coins in that big old thing that said, ding, she gave more percentage-wise than everybody else. Because it says that he knew her, just like he knows us. 
He knew her heart. He knew all these hypocrites' hearts when they were coming and doing what they were doing, and he knew why they were doing it. And they were doing it to be boastful. And she wouldn't. So if you're in a spot where you're like, listen, I, I, I'm in a tough spot, then you can still matter and do something for the kingdom. And that's great. Because when you really stop and think about it for a minute, we all at one time or another have been bankrupt spiritually. We've all been spiritually bankrupt before. And we needed to be rescued out of that. Because when you're in bankruptcy, you can't pull yourself out of it. And when you're spiritually bankrupt, you can't pull yourself out of it. But there's a God in heaven who sent his son Jesus to step out onto this planet. And as Blake said earlier, he spent 33 years on this planet, lived a perfect life, and died for our sins. And he did something for us. He saved our lives. But in doing so, he equipped us with gifts. Now, did you have some natural ability before you got saved? Yep, you did. But what God will do in your heart after becoming a Christian is begin to show you how that natural ability can now be applied in a different, to, to a different course, if you will. Now, if you're greeting people and hooking up friends, that's awesome, right? You did that before you got saved. But you can certainly do it after. And it might go a little different. It might be somebody that's a little more advanced in their biblical knowledge that you link up with someone that they can disciple. I only got one email a few months ago, by the way. One from all of you when I asked, hey, who's ready to disciple somebody? And I do know of some discipleship relationships already taking place. So obviously no need for you to email me. But if that resonates with you, and you're like, yes, I've got something in me. Something in me that I can share with others. Then I want you to. But see, these servants, they had something unique about them. All three of them. And I don't know their names, so I'm going to call them five, two, and one. But five had something unique in him. He was a, he was a gifted person. There's no question about it. But his gift came from the Lord. His gift, whatever it was, I don't know what he did. Don't know what he did, but it came from the Lord. And maybe his gift was that he was just willing to work harder than everybody else in his particular trade or whatever he traded for when he earned this income. Think about that now. Maybe it wasn't that he just woke up and he was an NBA star. Maybe it wasn't that he just woke up and he was so rawly talented at football. Maybe it wasn't that he was just naturally a great singer, but he worked Harder than everybody else. Wouldn't that work ethic in itself be such a blessing? Because he worked harder. So this is what I'm telling you. If there's a desire in your heart to do X, whatever X might be for you, then work really hard at it. And give it a year or two, depending on what it is. Learning how to weave a basket might take a little while. So give it a year or two. And then see how it plays out. Maybe you're a natural born killer at it. That sounded weird, too. I'm all over the weird ones today. Or maybe you already know what your talent is. And I'm, and I'm hoping, and I've been praying, that there's something stewing in you, the Holy Spirit brewing something in you, that even as I'm talking, you begin to say, that's what I can do. That's what I can do. I'm going to roll into... What I really want to hit on today, and I'm not trying to take something that, that certainly has spiritual application and only make it a materialistic thing. This is not what's going on. But there's a spiritual application out of this that we just discussed, our natural abilities. And there's obviously a financial win too, because in this parable, Jesus is telling this parable, and it's based on talents, meaning money, when it was written. So it's good. But let's not forget that the two that were faithful were faithful. And the one that wasn't was not faithful. I guess the easiest way for me to kind of cap that spiritual aspect is this, is, is to say this. Christians are fruitful Period. 
Period. Like you might not produce as much fruit as somebody else. But Christians are fruitful. Christians are fruitful people. And we must be. Because the one that wasn't fruitful, he's a hypocrite. And Jesus was like, dude, get out of here. He's a poser, if you will. So if you're a poser for this thing we call Christianity, like I was for many, many years, then I want you to get out of that. Don't pose about it. Don't, don't just say today, yes, I love the Lord. Oh, yes, I'm all about the Lord. And then tomorrow, do something that doesn't line up with that. Because if that's the case, then you might not have what you thought you had. But the good news is this, that our God is so full of grace. That even in our short attempts, even in our hypocrisy, even in our drug drug use, even in our addiction, even in our talking to somebody like we shouldn't, even in our flipping somebody off because you had road rage. Somebody's somebody's thinking, I'm so holy I've never done any of those. And then the rest of us are like, liar. (laughs) Maybe not to that extent. But he's so gracious that even when we stole something, Even when we cheated on a test, then guess what? He's gracious to forgive the heart that calls on him and says, please forgive me. And that grace means that you didn't earn it. And that's good. Because if we could earn it, we never could. We never would. And if it's a gift, then we can receive it. So if you've never received Christ as Lord and Savior, just talk to him. Just talk to him. And just say, look, not only, Lord, am I a train wreck, I'm a train that wrecked into a dumpster that caught on fire. I'm a train wreck dumpster fire. Because those seem to be the big ones these days. But here's what we want to do. We want to put some money in your hand. And we want to call it a talent. And we want you to be tasked with the responsibility of increasing it 100% for our building fund. Now, some of you are like, dang it, why did I come today? Because you don't want a part of this. So you don't need to be a part of it. And if you're tapped out and you work a thousand hours a week and all that, ain't nobody going to judge you because nobody knows except the Lord who's dealing with what, right? So if you're tapped out and you can't be a part of this, then don't be a part of it. But we got some money in these envelopes. And it's going to be different than the three different amounts. It's one amount. And it's going to be in your envelope. And to be above reproach, and to do this the right way, because it's a little odd if a church just withdraws a bunch of cash. And Blake got nervous the other day when he did. But we got $2,000 out. So we've got 20 $100 bills in 20 different envelopes. And if we run out... We'll give checks. But this is what I think would be pretty cool. Is if you would take it as a family. Tim, the one that gave me this awesome idea. They did it a little different when he was younger. But the principle is still the same. But but Tim said, even this morning, he said, man, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that. I'm going to set it on the table one night. And I'm going to say, all right, kids. What are we going to do as a family? And I can assure you that his two precious little girls are going to have some great ideas. But he shared some ideas with me that happened when he was younger. He said, Adam, it was amazing. There were young people in our church because we were trying to reach a goal that would make some cupcakes and sell them. Some of you might boil peanuts. If you do, I'll buy some, like a bunch of them. And I'll probably just sit beside you when you make them because they're not good when they're cold. Some of you have never made homemade pies and you've always wanted to. And you're like, if I only had $100 to buy sugar... And now you can. Some of you already thrift. And you're going to buy something and you're going to sell it. Just a little note for those of you that want to try eBay and you never have. If you don't have any good feedback, don't waste your time. It's all about your feedback score. And we've been doing it for a long time. But you got to start somewhere. 
Some of you like to go to yard sales, and I said I wasn't going to give ideas, and now I'm dumping out ideas. Some of you like to go to yard sales and find used lawnmowers and turn around and flip them for about double what you paid for them. But I want to tell you something. This is not for any, any ones. Okay? And I don't think we got any ones in the room. You are capable of doing more than you realize. I know you're tired. I know you work. I know all that. You are capable of doing this. You could take a roll of yarn and even if you can't braid, twist three or four of them together and make anklets and sell them for $2.50 or $25 and say, this is going to a building fund. We've got a mission. And you know what might happen is all of your friends might buy one and they'll say, that's the ugliest piece of yarn I've ever seen in my life. But every time I look at it, the Holy Spirit's doing something in my heart and tugging me in a certain direction. In just a moment, I'm going to ask Blake to bring the table up here, and we're going to have a time of checking out. But as he's doing that, I got a couple stories. I don't always get my sermon illustrations from Instagram, because that ain't a real good place to get them. But I keep up with tractors and bulldozers and fast cars. I'm turning into Matt Slayton. And what's going on is when I looked the other day, I saw something that had to do with speed. Matter of fact, it was two things that had to do with speed. And one of them's good and one of them's bad. So I want to share these stories before we do this. One of them was about running, and it resonated with me because I was a cross-country runner. That's my favorite. I've got a huge goal to go sub-20 again in a five-table before I turn 40. I ain't 18 anymore, so it's going to be hard, especially since I'm not training. Yeah, I know. I got to get running, I guess. Maybe I will today. But I watched this little video, and this scum of the earth is waiting at the barricades of this huge race. He's waiting at the barricades. And before the first place guy comes up, by the way, with a bicycle escort and a motorcycle escort, the scum of the earth is standing there, and he waits on them to get close, and then he sprints out from that barricade and tries to sprint to the finish line. And one dude screams a name at him, and I was like, I'm that guy. I ain't going to tell you the name, but I'm that guy that's screaming at him. Matter of fact, I jumped the barricade in Goldbergen. And all of a sudden, a guy at the finish line that's helping keep the time, he blocks him like this. And the guy tries to run around him like he's got a right to. What a hypocrite. He's a one. But what happens when the guy blocks him is the real winner speeds by him and breaks the tape. And the other guy, on his way up there, the hypocrite, the scum of the earth, the one, he takes his glasses off and does that after he enters the road course. I'm like, I, want, I literally want to find this guy. I ain't going to punch him. I might choke him out, but I ain't going to punch him. See, I get a little restless on this when I'm a runner. And I thought, man, we don't have them kind of people at our church. And if, if we do, you, you put on a good show for me. Because we got some great people in this room. We got some people that care about the Lord. And care about each other. And want to pull talents out of each other. And encourage each other. I'm not a Lamborghini guy. I'm a Ferrari guy. Because, you know, I like red. Because I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan. Jesus, when Jesus is a Bulldog fan. When you bleed, you bleed red. Period. No questions asked. But some of you are like, I wish he would hush. It's crimson. I'm, y'all stop. It's burgundy. But there was a Lamborghini video I saw. And this guy is driving his Lamborghini. And he's kind of like muscled up, about my size. And he's driving a Lamborghini. Some of you got that. And there's a guy beside him, and he's a grown man, and it's in a different language, but they had to close captioning, and I wrote down what he was saying, and I don't know what disease he has, but it is so precious to watch, 
And his arm's out of control because of the loss of his muscles. The guy in the passenger seat. And he's buckled in and he's doing this. And he is laughing so full of joy. It's like I was when a friend took me for a ride in a Mustang. And he hammered my head back in the seat. And all I could do was laugh. I was scared. But this is what he said. He said, please don't be scared of me. Talking to the driver. He said, I act like a child when I am happy. This is how I act. I yell and I laugh a lot. Because he thinks the driver's scared of him. But the driver's not scared of him and he's not trying to be an arrogant punk. He just don't want him to see him crying his face off. So this driver's driving this Lamborghini and he just hammers him back in the seat. And the guy's like, oh, wow. And he just, he's laughing like I would. And it's so awesome. It's literally one of my favorite videos. And and he says that. And the driver is like looking away as he's trying to drive. And I'm like, dude, what's the road? And he's looking away because he's just gushing. And I thought, you know. That Lamborghini driver might be a five, okay? He he might be. Who cares? He had a talent, or he had an ability, or he's a bank robber. But he got a Lamborghini. But maybe he said, you know what? I don't know if he's a believer or not. Maybe he said, I've always wanted a Lamborghini. And I'm going to give away $150 million. And then one day I'm going to pay cash for a Lamborghini. And we shouldn't judge the guy because he has a Lamborghini. And the only reason I told y'all that is because I do not want you to judge me when I get a Ferrari. Crystal's like, get over that, bro. So I don't know what that guy did to get that Lamborghini. But I know he had it and he served with it. He had it and he used it. Well, Adam, that ain't a talent. He was just driving. Okay. If you got a cool car, find somebody that's dreamed of riding in your new car, your cool car, and give them a ride. Just don't get a ticket. Well, you know. I don't know what your talents are, but you got a talent. Use it for the kingdom. Well, Adam, I don't like this particular challenge because I like giving to other causes. Well, I can assure you, That this money that will be put in your hand belongs to Jesus Christ. And he ain't going to be mad at you if you increase this money like crazy and give it to whatever you want to. Okay? But for this particular exercise, I would appreciate it if you would bring it back to this church in our new facility on January the 9th. And to try to be above reproach in doing this, we wrote up a little something to make it official. It says this. I actually called it the cash money checkout list. There was some good, there was cash money millionaires back in the day. There was some good rap songs, but don't listen to them, you know, that kind of thing. By signing the following amount, by signing out the following amount of money, talents, $100, you are agreeing to do everything in your power to increase the talent trusted to you by our master with a capital M and a comma, Jesus Christ. The due date to return this money is January the 9th, 2022. The original amount plus the increase will be placed 100% in our building fund and go directly toward the cost of purchasing our new location. There's a purpose of doing this, and I want you to be a part of it. So, Blake, if you'll bring that over so we can... Okay, let me say this too. If you think you're a five, and you're really a two, and then you're like, oh, I'm a one, and you find out in a month you're a one, listen, if you check this out, and then you're like, oh, man, there's no way I can increase it. If something happens, like, listen, we ain't prosecuting you. I mean, seriously, don't, don't let the enemy hang you up like that. I mean, really, we're not prosecuting you. It's not going to happen. This, that's not what this is about. This is about Jesus Christ. And he's given us some abilities. And I just want you to, to help and to be a part of it. I can't believe that he's wasted a whole message for that. 
So if you don't want to be a part of that, then listen. It's fine. But there's a principle that we can learn. And it's this. If you're talented in an area, you need to use it for the kingdom if you're a Christian. If you're talented in an area and you're not a Christian, you need to use it to bless people with. Because guess what? You might not like my friend Jesus. But he'll still use you to bless others. And that's good. I was going to do another football tie-in, but I won't do it. I won't do it. I'll spare y'all. But thank God we're on the way to the natty. I'm so excited about that. Somebody wants to boo. They ain't got it in them. So the band's going to sing a song. Actually, is it just you? What if they want? They can come up. He wants y'all to come up. I'll sing too. What the heck? I've learned in this message I've got a new talent. I'm sorry I sang last week, y'all. That was horrible. But here's what we'll do. They're going to sing a song, and I'm going to ask Crystal to check ours out, if you will, babe. And we're going to do this thing. Actually, we'll wait just in case we run out. Because it started, me and Blake was talking about this morning. We're like, what if we didn't get enough? He got so nervous checking that money out. But they knew him at the bank, and he was able to talk about it, so we're, we're good. Blake's not a robber trying to get $2,000 out of our account. But if you want to be a part of this, they're going to sing a song, and you just come on up and be a part. But before we do that, I'm going to pray for us. God, you're perfect, you're holy, and awesome. Thank you for the Instagram illustrations, because that dude in that Lamborghini is awesome. And I don't have a clue who he is or what he is. Or, or what he did for a living or what he does for a living. But I ask that you bless that man. And I ask that them tears that came out of his face, that they penetrate his soul. And I like that guy. And I pray for that guy in that passenger seat, Father, that you would bless him. Oh, would you bless him? Would you touch that man in ways that you never have before? I'll ask you to heal him. Would you touch that man? God, that scum of the earth, that number one that is really a number of million, he's way at the back of the line, that busted out and tried to win that race, would you bless him? Will you bless that man? Will you show him that there's grace and there's mercy and there's strength and there's power when he says, I was wrong and you're right? So would you work on his heart and heal him? Please. Please heal him. Father, for this money that me and some faithful men prayed over this morning, I ask again that you do an increase. I ask that you surprise us. I ask that you reveal hidden talents. I ask that you do some crazy stuff with this small exercise as we try to say you, Lord, are our master. And we, Lord, want to continue to enter into the joy of you. So would you just help us as we do what we're going to do? And would you bless those who are willing to give this an effort? And please let us run out of envelopes, Father. Please let us run out. Please let us run out. I love you. I praise you. Oh, you're good. And I love you. And I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.